tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, ngā mihi nui, kia koutou katoa. Welcome everyone to our Engineering Futures Evening, titled A Student Life Like No Other. My name is Colin. And I'm Kelly. And it's our pleasure to welcome you uh, from one of the lecture theatres in our new engineering building. Just a quick outline of what we're going to uh, be talking about tonight. Uh, the purpose really is to hear from uh, some of our current students about the student experience. That's why Kelly and I are sitting in the audience of the lecture theatre. Shortly we'll pass over to the students and they'll be telling you about engineering student life, some of the clubs that are available. Uh, we're then going to pass to Mike, our student development and engagement manager, and he'll be talking about some of the support available to our students and some of the development opportunities. Uh, we'll also cover accommodation options and a little bit more about this uh, fantastic building that we're in, including a virtual tour. And now a quick video before we hand over to our students. Pleasure to introduce two of our current engineering students, Brittany and Alex, who will share a little bit about student life. And we're joined by Hannah and Morgan. Hi, I'm hi, I'm Brittany. I'm a part two biomedical engineer. So part two means I'm in my second year of study. And I'm Alex, and I'm a fourth year mechatronics engineer in my final year of study. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah and I'm a part four civil engineering and French student here at the University of Auckland. Um, so I got interested in engineering because I really loved architecture and design. And so that's what led me on the path towards structural engineering. And that's what I'm looking forward to starting in next year. Cool, yeah, kia ora koutou. My name is Morgan Dolphin. Uh, shout out to all the people from Northland. I hail from Kaitaia, pretty much all the way up there. I'm a part three chemical engineering student and like Hannah, I'm also a conjoint degree student, but my conjoint is in global studies. Cool. Um, so at the University of Auckland, we have lots of great things to take part in. So one of the um, biggest clubs that we have at the university is the um, club called AUES, which is the Engineering Society. So within that group, it's basically a group for everyone in engineering where they have lots of different social and educational activities, um, such as like Round the Bays, which you'll see on your screens, but as well as like an engineering ball, they have Steins and also lots of interaction with the, um, your fellow students and industry members so that you can um, get a head start on your career networking as well. Um, we also have Engineers Without Borders, which is part of a wider charity that's actually global. But the students who take part in Engineers Without Borders learn a lot about the environmental challenges facing um, different countries around the world. So it could be to do with uh, quality of water and um, so they take those to students around schools in New Zealand and get to share their knowledge and teach people new things. Formula SAE. So Formula SAE is one of the coolest engineering clubs on campus. I'm not personally a member, but it's pretty amazing because what these people do at Formula SAE is they build that vehicle that you can see there. Um, it's an electric race car. They build it from scratch using the engineering knowledge that they get from their degree. So they do some really fascinating work and in a huge range of areas. Um, of course, a lot of mechanical engineering, but also materials engineering and that they make their composite chassis and stuff that you wouldn't ordinarily expect, stuff like marketing and logistics. It's a really cool club to be a part of if you want to really put your engineering skills to the test. Yeah, and Engineering Review is um, one of the clubs on campus that's not focused on engineering. So we put on a theatre show each year. Um, and theatre kind of sounds scary, but it's just a good way to meet people and have fun um, and do something that's not really part of your studies. 
Cool. And we also have the opportunity to take part in heaps of different sports within the engineering faculty. So there's interfaculty competitions where you could play netball, soccer, basketball, maybe touch rugby, but there's also heaps of other sports that you can take part in. And one of the um, favorites in the engineering faculty is Waka Ama. And our team is quite successful and they managed to head over to Hawaii a few times with uh, their success in Waka Ama. So if you're interested in sport, there's definitely lots of different sports. You can try a new sport or if you're really good at a sport, you can take part in one of our teams and um, hopefully help us towards success in the future as well. And if you haven't maybe connected with one of the clubs we've already talked about. We have so many other um, clubs throughout the university, but also within the engineering faculty. So we have um, Aura, which is one of the robotics clubs that heaps of engineering students take part in. And they even managed to get um, over to America to take part in the BattleBots competition for Discovery Channel. But as well as that, there's heaps of other clubs. And if you don't find one that suits you, you can also propose a club and start a club with your friends or um, whatever you're passionate about, you can, I'm sure, find other people who share that interest once you've made it to engineering. It's now our pleasure to pass over to uh, Mike Willemont, who's our Student Engagement and Development Manager, to tell you more about the student development and support options available within the Faculty of Engineering. Yeah, kia ora and good evening, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to, to come and join us this evening. And I, I'm uh, talking to you from about um, maybe three and a half or four feet to Colin's right. So it looks like there's nobody else in this lecture theatre, but we're all uh, kind of spaced out backwards. Um, a little bit about what the faculty does for you once you're here. So as a faculty, we really have two big goals for any new student coming in. One is that all new students who enter our faculty, we want you to be well supported and have the best chance of success while you're here. And the other is that while you're here, you have as many opportunities as possible to just become the best possible graduate that you can be. Um, so to do this, the faculty has a group of staff um, that uh, their primary role is just dedicated to supporting and improving the student experience. And these include things like pastoral support, career support, leadership development, and all these other opportunities for students. Um, and these are sort of in addition to the services that the, the university provides to all students. So there are a lot of extra things just for engineering students. We really want students to come here and find the thing that they are really passionate about. So if we don't provide it, you have an opportunity to start it. And if you go out and create something, we'll, we'll tend to try and work with you to see if there's a way that we can support you to complete that thing. So recently, um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the BattleBots show on uh, the Discovery Channel. We sponsored some of our students from the Auckland University Robotics Association, Aura, uh, to go and compete in this. And there are hundreds of other different clubs across the university. Um, and the other two points I'll make before we move to the next slide is one, that everything we do is either in close partnership or led directly by students. So there are a lot of different opportunities for you to be involved in the running of the faculty as a student here. And then on the specialization selection, um, really important point that everyone who comes into part one and passes part one with us will get a place somewhere in part two. We have exactly the same number of places in part two as we do in part one. So there's a place for everybody going forward. And in, in the first part of what I said, uh, we want you to come here and we want everyone to be well supported and succeed. Uh, so if you've been to the session last night, you'll know that our um, Bachelor of Engineering Honours program is quite a tightly prescribed first year. Everyone takes the same seven papers. And this is true for every other undergraduate student in the faculty. So everyone you see has taken the same that you have. Uh, what we do is we uh, pay some of the high achieving students to sit and be available as a drop-in academic help service uh, for students um, every afternoon uh, down in the Leech, which is one of our student common areas. And I thought, I was just talking to Alex before this, and I thought I might throw across to him because I understand he's actually uh, been in and used some of the sessions. And Alex, maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, what it was like to use the Part 1 Assistance Centre um, as a student. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, quickly, when you come to engineering, you learn it's not like a solo thing. You need help from other people. And you know, part one assistance is a really way to get that from um, people that... Oh, he's good. Okay. A really good way to get that from people who, um, who know what they're doing. Um, you don't have to do it all yourself, and having those mentors there to help you through is, is really excellent. Um, and it's also a great way to meet people, because you, know, you, you don't have to go through your engineering degree alone. 
um, and it's, you can get help from others too. Uh, our Women in Engineering uh, project network, there's a whole lot of different parts to this. And uh, Brittany, who's been with us, is actually one of our Women in Engineering network leaders. Uh, so I thought I might actually just throw across to her. Brittany, maybe you can tell us a little bit about when and what it is you do, and I'll talk about the project after. Yeah, so I'm a woman engineering leader and I'm also the secretary of WEN. And so basically WEN is just a community for all people who identify, identify as females within the faculty. And it's just a really inclusive network. We run different events, social and um, professional events, professional development events. And yeah, it's lots of fun. You get to meet lots of cool people. That photo there is all the other leaders alongside me and yeah. It's, it's a really good thing to get involved with. Awesome, thanks so much, Brittany. Uh, yeah, uh, Women in Engineering is a really important uh, part for the faculty. And we're, we're currently boasting one of, one of the best uh, gender representations within engineering uh, in our part of the world. However, we also acknowledge we've got a long way to go. And it's not really just about women trying to solve this for women, it's about all of us coming on board to solve this together so that we have, you know, and this is really at the heart of what diversity is. Um, engineers are decision makers. When you go out there, you are technical decision advisors, makers, and for us to have the best possible decisions made about things that are gonna impact us, we've gotta have a correct representation of the people out there in society. So that, that's kind of what diversity is. Alongside what um, Brittany just spoke about, so there's a lot of student leadership opportunities available within it. There's an uh, industry networking program. There's uh, all sorts of development opportunities. We also have two full-time staff that uh, are available and run a, a separate program looking at um, uh, increasing the number of women in engineering. So hopefully some of you here have come across uh, a few of the school outreach program uh, that we've run in association with WEN and partnership with WEN. Uh, and they're also available to students as, uh, as support. So we have two full-time staff that you can come to at any time. And, and yeah, if you want to check out a little, a little bit more about what is available to students, uh, just head on over to womaninengineering.auckland.ac.nz and there's quite a comprehensive list there. Okay, so SPIES is our South Pacific Indigenous Engineering Students Association. Uh, and, oh, I said that wrong, Engineering Society. Uh, and again, as a student-led uh, organization, um, it focuses mainly on ongoing support and development for our Māori and Pacific students, who currently make up about 9% of our student population. Uh, for students that are thinking about applying via our MAP test program, uh, SPIES are a really important uh, support network. And the, so the MAP test program uh, is, here we go, and, and to a kind of program uh, offers an extra set of tutorials uh, and a dedicated study, study space with other students who have come through it. We also have a full-time uh, student support advisor for Māori and Pacific students, and uh, this is an area that has been growing a lot for us in the last um, couple of years. So the Dean's Leadership Program uh, fits more into the opportunity to be the best possible graduate that you can be. So this is a program that we run uh, in semester two every year. And it looks at breaking down leadership into ways that we can teach and ways that we can learn and then brings in other people that are really already awesome at it and what we can learn from them. And what I might do, because Alex here has actually been through the program with us. Um, Alex, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the experience within the program was like from your perspective. Awesome, yeah. Um, so I was in it last year and Brittany said she just got into it this year actually, which is super cool. Um, but the leadership program is just another one of those things that um, Mike and his awesome team do to, to help you uh, alongside your studies. Um, it's a great way to, again, meet people um, and do engineering with other people and also learn about the soft skills uh, required for engineering, as well as how to be like the best self that you can be um, to be the best of the teams that you're in. And lucky last is employability. So we're, um, we're very lucky, I think, in terms of the commercial interest in uh, students from the Faculty of Engineering. Uh, so connected to this a little bit is the 800 hours of practical work and these are really a highlight I think and an opportunity to take the stuff that you're learning in the classroom into the workplace and see how it gets used. Um, we have a really close relationship with industry so industry routinely provide these intern opportunities for us and we have a couple of ways that um, 
we help students connect to those opportunities. So one is uh, the employer presentation series, and this is uh, most weeknights. Um, and what we do is communicate the opportunities that are associated with each cohort group as they happen. Uh, and the other part is helping students be ready for those opportunities. So we, we run a lot of extra workshops on, you know, how to create a CV, how to interview well, um, how to network, when you should start doing that. And yeah, we, we find uh, and encourage a lot of our part one students actually to start coming to them uh, right off the bat to get a bit of an idea of what industry you're looking for. Thanks, Mike. Um, you're looking at a picture of our brand new engineering building, and that's where we're all sitting right now. I'm going to hand it back to Brittany and Alex to talk about our campus and the surrounding area. Yeah, so our campus is located in the heart of the city. Um, it's, it's literally around everything we have on campus. We even have like a convenience store where you can get food and stuff. There's art galleries close by. We have a gym close by as well, as you can see on there. Um, and also quite close to the Auckland domain, not to mention Queen Street and like everything else in the center of Auckland. Um, so it's a really central campus and it's a, a really cool experience to be part of um, coming from, you know, if you're from the suburbs or if you're from somewhere else in New Zealand, um, it's a cool place to study. Yeah. Yeah. So within 15 minutes walking distance, you can get to so many different places. So I was in halls, so right on campus. And from there, we would just leave our dorm and we would get to quite often Ponsonby. You go get some ice cream, some burgers. You can go literally anywhere you want very easily. So there's new market close by, there's the new mall there, the Auckland Museum, that's always a good way to spend some time in the weekends. Yeah, plenty of things to do. Awesome, thank you, Brittany and Alex. Now I'll go over a little bit about student accommodation because I know some people calling in might be from out of town, out of Auckland, or might be from Auckland and just want to move to the CBD during their studies. So we have four different accommodation halls um, and all of them are super close and central to our main campus. So you'll see that the closest one is a six minute walk to the library and the furthest one away um, is 15 minute walk. In the middle of this slide, you'll see the cost. So all of our accommodation is single rooms and we also have some larger single rooms and all of the accommodation is fully catered. So we mentioned before that we're coming to you uh, live and direct from our new engineering building. You've just seen a photograph of that from the outside uh, in a previous slide and we're in one of the lecture theatres. Uh, so a few things about the new engineering building and uh, where you'll be uh, taking your studies. So our degree is taught entirely on our city campus, which means that those maps that you saw, you're really in the heart of the city. Uh, you're very connected. There's a lot of things around to do, uh, but we also have a very vibrant campus itself. Uh, within the new building, you can see us in one of our lecture theatres. Uh, one of the really exciting things for Kelly and I teaching in this new building though is that uh, a lot of the teaching doesn't just happen in these lecture theatres. We've got a lot of really purpose-built, uh, flexible learning spaces that allow us to get into a kind of a more active delivery mode. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can do there in terms of group projects, uh, especially design and build projects. Uh, there's some competitions that we can run there. And that really allows you to get a, a very engaging and hands-on experience. So we'll show you a quick video tour now, uh, just to show you around the new building a little bit more. shows you a little more about our new uh, building, even from the outside, and um, showing how uh, some of the local birds aren't too keen on the drones that we use for our footage yet. Mm -hmm. So in tonight's presentation, we've uh, given you a bit of an introduction to engineering student life and clubs. Uh, we've also talked 
about the support available to our students, some of the fantastic development opportunities that we have to make you uh, really become the best version of yourself. And Kelly and I have also talked briefly about accommodation options. Uh, and we've shown you around our, our fantastic new facilities in our new engineering building. Yeah. And some next steps. This is our last engineering features evening, but you can check out a variety of on-demand videos on YouTube just by searching for the University of Auckland Engineering. Um, and you can, of course, apply now. So applications are already open and we're really looking forward to receiving your applications. We also have some upcoming events on campus and online. So we have Open Day coming up. We've spoken about this a bit already tonight. We're going to have an online version that's on Tuesday, the 25th of August, and also an in-person one at the university on Saturday, the 29th of August. And more details will be coming shortly about those events. We also have Ingenuity Day, which is where women high school students are invited on campus to try out a variety of hands-on engineering activities to learn a bit more about what engineering is. So look for those details and we hope that you can join us at some of those events. And now we're gonna open it up to questions. So just a reminder that there is a question and answer button at the bottom of your screen. And we'll start answering them live. And Bella is also answering some of them behind the scenes. And we might pass one over to Mike first that has already been answered um, behind the scenes, but I thought it might be important for Mike to give a bit of detail in the um, live session as well. Is there support for LGBTQ plus students? Mike? Yeah, the, the simple answer to that is heck yes. Um, it, one, one of the most, I guess, important things that we try and accomplish, I think, as a faculty is that no matter where you come from, who you are, what you believe in, you can come in here and, and really have the right environment to succeed. So uh, one of the things that um, uh, the Central Equity Office commented recently on actually was how active our, our rainbow engineering um, network is. And uh, this is mainly formed by current students uh, and you know, undertake a lot of regular activity, games nights. Um, we recently had a really cool event uh, just out in the, the new foyer. We've got this sort of, uh, you have to come in and see it in open day, but it's a sort of bleacher set up with um, all of these PowerPoints and uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic place to hang out. Um, but yeah, we, we had an event there and I think we had 50 or 60 people turn up to it, which uh, we've sort of never had in that space. So there's a, there's a lot of, um, like-minded people. There's actually a lot of uh, support. There's a lot of allies in this space. Um, every single person on my team is one of them. So uh, we, we have advocacy roles for students as well. If um, you run into a situation, you're not quite sure how to deal with it. Uh, we have a group of staff that um, you can always come to and ask, how, how do I sort of proceed through this? Um, but yes, the simple answer to that, I've, I've put a link in the, the response to that question. Um, yeah, a uh, really, really active Rainbow Engineering Network. Great, thanks very much, Mike. Uh, now, the next question is a fantastic one, which is how do you get into the Formula SAE Club? And for that, I think it would be best to uh, hear from Brittany uh, with her experience of that. Yeah, so I'm currently in the process of like trying to get into it. Um, it's obviously a little skewed because of lockdown and everything. Normally this would all happen at the start of the year. So the process that I went through started at the start and it begins with an online application. So forms filling out your uh, experience with things and your interest with it, just letting you know a bit more about yourself. And then you move on to an interview stage. And so they ask you some technical questions. You do not have to be any by any means uh, expert in the field um yeah so they ask you a few technical questions and also just get to know a bit more about you and then if you get through that stage you then have to do a newbie project so that means you have to do a engineering style project that is related to the field of formula sa that formula sae that you want to be involved with so you can be either part of the electrics so all the electrical engineering sort of things composites or the mechanical side. And so you do a project under that, you have to keep a workbook throughout and then they'll select you into the team from that. And that's the stage that I'm up to. Awesome, thanks Brittany. Uh, the next question is for both of you. We've talked a bit about evenings. Uh, there's also a question on here about mornings. Uh, so what are your experiences with morning classes? And I'll read this directly because it's a wonderfully worded question. How much do they make you want to move to Iceland to farm sheep instead? 
<laughs> I'm enjoying the like writing quality of these questions. The creativity levels are high. Um, one good thing is that if you enroll in courses and then you have like all these 8 a.m. classes and you're just not a morning person, um, most of your classes will have lecture recordings. So I wouldn't advocate for it. Like it's obviously better to be there in person and it helps um, you a lot with your understanding if you can talk directly with the lecturers. But um, let's say you have 8 a.m. classes and you'd rather start at 9, then you can definitely catch up on video recordings later on. Um, yeah, but it's quite flexible, so you can do whatever suits you really. If you prefer working at night time, then you can watch your recordings then. But um, yeah, if you're on campus and working with your friends, then I think you can, you know, do what works for you. Yeah, I'll just add to that. Um, well, I'm probably not the best person to answer this question because I may be kind of against the norm in that I actually enjoy 8 a.m. classes. Um, well, maybe enjoy is too strong a word, but I, I find morning classes easier than afternoon classes. Um, and so it really depends on the kind of person you are, but I would, again, I would really recommend bringing a degree of discipline to the table. Whether you're going to classes in person or watching lecture recordings, it's very important to find a system that makes yourself do that. Um, a next question, I don't know if Brittany and Alex have information on this. The question is, are there any engineering music groups? And so they may know the answer to that based on their own experience or their experience of their friends. But I'd also ask Alex to speak a little bit about the club that he started at the University of Auckland um, in the Faculty of Engineering to talk a little bit about the process of if you don't see clubs that are of interest to you, you really can start your own. Yeah, so um, one of the, the one that I know about um, for, for music is the engineering review. So I mentioned at the start, we do a stage show each year. Um, and within that, we also have a band. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, just like this year, we have a brass band um, and sometimes we have a string band and, and things like that. Um, and it's just a great way to meet people and perform. Um, but if there's not a club that you want to uh, join that has music stuff available to you, you can also start one up like Kelly was talking about. Um, when I was in my second year, I helped start up a association for mechatronic students because Everyone else had one, like Civil had one and Software had one, but we didn't actually have one for us. Um, and we wanted to deliver like social events and professional events um, to our students too. So we got involved in that and went through the whole process of that, which is very much like starting a company, uh, except there's a lot more support from the faculty. And we started that up and got it running and, you know, within one semester. So you can definitely, if there's not one already, you can get involved uh, and start one up yourself. Also, I do know from friends that there are music groups within the university, not in engineering. And there's no limitations as to what clubs you can join within the university. So yeah, you could just get involved in a club that will involve many other different degrees. Thanks, Brittany and Alex. I'm gonna pass it right back to you with a couple of quick follow-ups on that. So one is how many people would you need to start a new club? And also, um, do you know of any poetry clubs in engineering or the university? Um, so to start a club, um, you just need, well initially you just need the people who are keen to get it going. Um, so I think there was seven of us that actually founded Mecca initially. Um, and you know, we had the treasurer and, and all that kind of role. Um, and once you get to that stage, I think to actually get money from the faculty and from the university to, to fund your club, you need about 25 people. And depending on how many people you have in your club from there, you get more money or less money. But the short answer is not that many at all. Um, as well as that, if you want to do poetry, I'm not sure if we have one, a poetry club in engineering, but you can come and write for us at the engineering review. We'd love to have you, um, or you can definitely start your own. And I'm sure there are also clubs of poetry uh, around campus as well. Yeah. So the next question uh, is uh, an interesting one, which is how many uh, clubs could you be a part of before dying from stress-related complications? So uh, Hannah and Morgan, I'll let you maybe slightly <laughs> reinterpret the question, but you may be able to answer that. You I'll, take that yeah, one? <laughs> I'll, I'll, take, I'll go first on this one. So if you're anything like me, you will find that as your life has progressed, you end up devoting more and more of your time to extracurricular activities that you maybe don't need to, and your life becomes more and more stressful. What you will find when you come to university is that your life is a lot more in your own hands and the amount of time that you can invest in these activities actually expands. And university is also 
great for kind of growing you as a person, which expands your capacity to deal with these extra activities. Um, so my answer is probably more than you expect. Uh, in reality, my answer also is going back to our point before about how flexible clubs are functionally infinite, but if you really wanted to devote, devote yourself to a club, for most people, I would say the answer is one or two. Would you agree? Yeah, I would say, yeah, probably two or three might be pushing it, but I guess if you're really into it, you can definitely spend lots of time um, on those if that's what you want to do. So, yeah. yeah. Great. Thanks very much. And uh, we, again, going to throw it right back to the students because they really are the stars of tonight's show here. Um, and we've just had a fantastic question come in. Uh, in terms of networking, what are your main tips? So uh, we'll pass back to Alex and Brittany. I'm really keen to hear about your experience of networking, some of your tips, and um, maybe uh, if that's helped you with um, any of your internships or anything like that, uh, applying for jobs, then uh, I think that'd be something that a lot of our viewers would be interested in. So I definitely think attending club events is a good way to meet people and find connections. Um, yeah, so with me, I was part of the Women Engineering Network. And so that was a great way to meet lots of different people. So I was organizing sponsor night. And so the whole point of that is bringing together, we had about 12 different companies and different staff from those companies. And students were able to just go and talk to those people and make connections and find internships in that. So my advice to you would be just to get involved, just to go to events that aren't all the time. You just have to look at your emails or be on Facebook and you just have to be actively finding events and getting involved. Yeah, definitely. And, and the, the places you're going to make the most meaningful connections are the events that you go to that you're actually interested in. That's why clubs are so great alongside your studies. You can find people that like the same things you like and, and do the same things you do um, and, and meet people that way. It's definitely very helpful for your internships as well. Um, collaborating with people on how to, you know, write a good CV or even if you meet someone from industry, um, if they like you, you know, they might give you a job. So it's very useful. Yeah, so there's lots of um, speed dating style events mm. where they have different industry people with internship opportunities coming and you'll just do a quick five minute interview with them. And potentially you may end up with a job from that. Potentially, if you're just cheeky and ask, they might also give. <gasps> Great. Thanks, Alex and Brittany, for those good tips. I wanted to see if Mike also had some advice from the student development manager perspective on networking at the university. I, I, yeah, thanks. I, I think these two have summed it up pretty well, actually. The, the, um, the only things I'd add is, one, to get good at networking, you've just got to do it a lot. Uh, so turning up is a really, really important part of it. Uh, the other is that we have... Um, uh, a set of workshops that look at exactly that, how to network, how to introduce yourself, how to ask interesting questions and make sure that you're kind of finding the people that fit best with the thing you want to do. Um, we had uh, a really cool statement from uh, Ainsley Kemp, one of our students who uh, was present at, at a different one of these. And she said um, that, you know, while she receives a lot of emails from the employer liaison manager, she went away to, to two of them, uh, uh, to, to a whole lot of them, but she got two jobs out of, it, out of it and a scholarship that came directly from one of the companies she was working at. And that was all a result of, of just turning up to some of the um, opportunities that were made available to her. Great, thanks very much, Mike. Uh, we now have another question for our students, Alex and Brittany, and it's another really good question here. Uh, why did you choose to study engineering? Uh, and as well, uh, why did you choose your specialization within engineering? Um, so how I chose engineering and why I chose my specialization are kind of linked in a way. Like when I was in year 13, I didn't really know what I wanted to do at all. Um, and I just really knew I liked uh, physics and math um, and chemistry and stuff, which is super nerdy, but um, I really enjoyed those. And I knew I wanted to do something around that area. Um, and I had no idea what to pick. And so why I chose engineering was I didn't have to choose for another year. Um, and there's so many different opportunities within the faculty that I could then, you know, learn more about before I actually made my decision. Um, and I then chose mechatronics, um, which is a mixture of three, because I really just couldn't decide. And I really like having variety in what I do. So even if you think there isn't one for you and you can't decide, there definitely is. Yeah, so I had quite the process of figuring out to study engineering and then also what specialization I'd do. So 
in year 13, I still had no clue what to do. I applied to four different universities and I had two different courses at each of those universities. And these were like a whole range of things. These were like arts degrees, um, global studies. I was going to do engineering. It was crazy. Um, I decided I wanted to do engineering because I had done electronics at high school and I'd always loved the little projects you get to do in that. And I was, yeah, I thought that would be quite a fun career. So that's how I ended up coming to that decision. But if you don't know what to do, just choose something you can always change. I know plenty of people who have chosen, chosen and changed. Um, and then with my specialization, I again had no clue. I wasn't the best at making these decisions, but don't put too much pressure on yourself. So at the end of the year, you get to put a you get to rank your top five different specializations and the order of priority of what you want to get into. And so at the midnight before it was due, I still was not sure. And I was between mechanical and biomedical engineering. I just ended up choosing biomedical because I just looked at the papers and it was the papers that excited me more. So I think that's probably a good way to choose because I've had lots of people tell me, you can get whatever job you want with an engineering degree, but if you enjoy your time at university, then it'll be more beneficial to you because you'll be in love with it by the time you finish. Thanks, Alex and Brittany, that was great. Um, just a little bit on specializations. Um, we talked about this in one of the other sessions, but I just wanted to highlight since it does seem like an interesting question from the students and it was the top poll choice as well. Um, to get into your top preferred specialization, the best way to do that is to perform really well academically in your first year. We consider your grade point average in your first year to get into the specializations. And the numbers for the specializations are based on both student demand and industry demand so that we can ensure that there's jobs available for our students when they graduate. Um, and now I want to ask the next question also to the students. Um, and this is, are you able to join clubs or societies from other faculties? So I wondered if Brittany and Alex, either of you have experience in joining clubs from other faculties? Yes, yeah, so there's no worries with joining um, clubs of other faculties, uh, especially if you're in halls or something, you'll make friends from different faculties and you'll probably go along to events with them. It's very inclusive. You can do join whatever you want and also with your general education paper that you take in first year that also may lead you to taking some different clubs so like i took italian as my general education paper so it, i could very easily have joined the italian club if i if i wanted to great thanks very much Brittany and alex uh, the next question we're going to pass to mike uh, and that is, is there help available for people who might struggle with exam conditions? I'm really glad that question was asked because I, I didn't talk about the work that the university has for, uh, in terms of how we support students with all sorts of disabilities, learning disabilities, physical disabilities. We have uh, the, the equity office that uh, focuses exactly on this. And if you've, uh, if you've had an assessment already, it's, it's really, really good to get registered with them uh, as early as possible. I will drop a link as the um, response to this question in a second. But uh, the short answer to that is, is yes, there's a lot of uh, extra accommodations that we can put uh, for students that need them uh, to make sure that we're all on the same playing field. Thanks, Mike. And from a lecture perspective, I know that this is quite common. So feel free to utilize those supports if you come to the university. Um, the next question is for the students. And this is um, about your career aspirations when you're finished your degree. So maybe both of you could share a little bit about what your career aspirations are. So I have really no idea compared to when I first started. Um, yeah, I just don't know. Um, and I think that's fine as well. Um, I think engineering is a competency degree, so you don't have to you know, choose exactly what you want to do and, and go right from the start. Um, some people do, which is excellent. But if you don't, that's also fine. Um, it will change as you take different papers. Like Brittany said, there's so many that you can choose. Um, right now, I think I want to go into the rail industry in New Zealand, which is super weird. Um, but I did an internship with one of those companies, you know, and, and your internship will also affect where you want to go with that. Um, but who knows, it might change tomorrow as well. And you don't have to really decide um, until you need to really. So just take it chill and find what you enjoy. That's what's important. So I'm currently not sure as well what I want to get into. Biomedical is such a broad degree and it's so, 
open to opportunities, especially because the skills that I learn are very applicable to other industries and things like that. So for me, I've always been involved with sports in that. So probably I'd want to get involved in something sporting, but also modeling. I really enjoy maths and modeling. And that's the thing that attracted me to biomedical engineering. So yeah, something under that realm. Great, thanks Brittany and Alex. And um, one of the things to highlight here, of course, is that uh, engineering um, is a, a study option that really allows you to uh, unlock a range of career options. So uh, the, um, the reality is you can go almost anywhere with an engineering degree. There's a lot of options within the engineering, but uh, the skill set uh, that Alex talked about, the, the fact that um, you've got a whole lot of competence in a whole lot of areas, makes engineering graduates uh, really sought after in a range of uh, different careers. Uh, often banks uh, start coming to the university around this time of year and they're really keen to employ some of our graduates as well. So there really are no limits to what you're able to do upon graduating from our degree. Yeah, and if you've missed some of our engineering future sessions um, from earlier this week or last week, we have showcased quite a lot of students and graduates um, who have now taken on different careers outside of their specialization that they studied. So if you missed out on those, you can go back and watch the recordings and we'll be sending those details out at a later date. The next question I'm hoping that Mike can answer for us. Um, it's about accommodation and choosing choices for accommodation halls. Um, if you don't get your first choice of accommodation, would that affect um, your second choice? Would it cause you to miss out on your second or third choice if, if your first choice is already full? Mike, I hope you know the answer. This is, like, this is a real curveball, and it's a good question. Uh, I, I don't know the direct answer, but I do know that we have, uh, we're opening a new hall, and that's significantly expanded the number of beds that we, um, we have as an institution this year. Uh, so, I, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure how the selection process for that works. I'm sorry, that's uh, accommodation services, which exist outside of the faculty. Uh, but I, I do know there are a lot more beds available, so I, I hope that um, you're able to get your first choice. And if not, um, all of them are pretty amazing uh, and really, really close to, um, to our faculty building. And it seems like students in accommodation seem to come down here and, and work a lot in the evenings. Um, yeah, that, I guess that's about as much information as I have on that one, I'm sorry. Thanks, Mike. There may also be more inf information on our website, accommodation.auckland.ac.nz. So there might be some information on that. Um, the next question I'm going to ask to the students is, what is your favorite part about studying engineering in our faculty? Easily the people, um, the staff and the students and, and just everyone you meet is super awesome. Um, you kind of come into it thinking that everyone's going to be really nerdy and weird. Um, and they are, but they're also really funny uh, and, and really fun to be around. Um, you make a lot of friends. And even if you don't come in with people from your high school, there's always people that you can meet through clubs and through your classes. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely the best part of it for me. Yeah, so I'm from Nelson. And so no one from my high school came to Auckland Uni, let alone doing engineering at Auckland. So it was definitely good to just have a good group of people that you could get to know. In first year, it's really good by everyone doing the same seven papers together. It means that you make some really good friends and yeah, it definitely makes it easier. It's good. <laughs> Great, thanks very much. And uh, we're gonna fire it straight back to you both. Uh, we've just had a question pop up in the Q&A about uh, whether there are any football uh, teams or any uh, football clubs uh, for students on campus. Yeah, so there are actually football teams that you can sign up for within the university, but then I'm pretty sure, so there's an inter-faculty competition, which the engineering has engineering eagles as their team, and they do about six different sports or so, like it's a significant amount of sports and uh, throughout the year. And uh, I think football is actually one of those sports. So it'll be indoor football, so futsal, but yeah, something to get involved with and any engineering student can get involved with that. Yeah, and on top of that, there's also not just, um, you know, you know t uh, specific teams ones, but um, there's lots of social futsal as well. Lots of social sports run by all of the specialization clubs as well. Like Mecca does an event each year with some of the other clubs. Um, so if you're not at that level and you don't want to go competitive, uh, there's definitely social as well. Uh, the next question is a really good one. It's from someone who's very passionate about engineering but isn't sure which specialization or which engineering field they want to do and they've asked for some advice. 
So just before we hand over to our students to give you perspective on this, uh, the first year of an engineering degree is a common uh, year across all of our cohort. And so you'll all take the same subjects along with one uh, broadening general education paper that really gives you exposure to the range of disciplines and the range of subject areas within engineering. And it gives you an entire year to see what you like and to make up your mind. Uh, we'll now hand over to Hannah and Morgan so that they can talk about how they uh, chose their specialization within their first year. Cool, so um, for me, I kind of came into engineering with a pretty definite aim of what I wanted from engineering. So I kind of always knew I wanted to do civil engineering and that was because of my interest in buildings and things like that. But what I found is that I've met so many people at engineering who came in with like a really strong idea of that they wanted to do um, one particular specialization. But through that course of um, first year, as Colin was saying, where you get to um, kind of sample all the different variety of um, courses on offer and the different specializations. I know a lot of people have changed their mind over the years. So um, things like software engineering, if you have no previous experience of software engineering, you get to do a paper where you learn to code and it, it's based off you having no prior knowledge at all. So um, it's kind of a great introduction where you might not have done it before, but then you find that you're either good at it or you love doing it. Um, so. I mean, I wouldn't be too worried if you're in high school and you're not too sure about your specialization. There's quite a lot of time to try it out once you're um, at uni. What about you? Yeah, so I'm the opposite to Hannah. I came into engineering with no clue of what I wanted to do. Uh, and I guess the wisdom I would give on that is you can't go wrong. I put a lot of effort into researching what specialization I wanted because I just couldn't decide. And what I have found since joining my specialization is that in one way that research paid off because I love it, and another way I had no idea what it was going to actually be like even after that research. And that isn't a bad thing because it shows that the world is exciting and your courses will put things in front of you that you never would have expected that you will love. And so you can't go wrong. Take what you get in first year, see what you enjoy, and I would say go for that. Awesome, thanks. And another question for the students. Can you talk maybe about a favorite project that you worked on in one of your courses? Um, so, oh, probably right now in your fourth year, you get to do a part four project. Um, it's not really one of my courses, but it is one of the ones I chose. Um, and I'm doing a project on a sensor, which is like kind of squishy and soft and it kind of changes as you put force on it. Um, and I'm really enjoying that right now because it's a lot of um, like modeling. It's a lot of math as well. It's actually making the thing too. Um, and that's what a lot of the projects I took in my other courses had that I really enjoyed the most. And so that's why I chose my powerful project. Um, but I think Brittany has an, another answer as well. Because I'm in second year, I haven't really done many biomedical engineering specific projects yet, especially because we've been off campus. But one of the projects that I had lots of fun doing this semester was we got a list of all rest homes in Auckland and all public transport routes in Auckland and we had to optimize the fastest route for four couriers to go around every single rest home in Auckland on the bus transport system. And yeah, so that's kind of what engineering science and biomedical engineers do is the optimization sort of thing. It's just one realm of it. But yeah, that was mm. quite a lot of fun and we plotted it all on a map so you could see the different optimized routes. Thanks, Brittany and Alex. I just have a quick follow up. So those projects sound awesome, but also kind of complicated. How did you learn to do that? So for my one, um, we had different labs on coding all through the semester. We had one every single week. And in those labs, we learned all the skills week by week. We just built on our skills. And by the end of the year, uh, end of the semester we all of the skills we had learned were put into the one project and that's how you get to do it it actually doesn't seem that bad it just felt like the project the lab at the start of the course but yeah you'd learned so much along the way that it makes it okay yeah yeah i remember in um in first year when i was seeing all these projects that you could do in fourth year and stuff i was like how do people even do those it's kind of ridiculous and i could never see myself doing them um but i think what you learn is one, how to talk about your projects and make them sound fancy. But two, most <laughs> importantly, it's 
how to how to break problems down and how to make them into smaller problems and apply what you have learned. Um, and there's always lots of help and all your friends will be doing similar projects so you can get help from them and part one assistant center and also your lecturers. Great, thanks uh, Brittany and Alex. Now the next question is kind of a two part question uh, directed at Brittany. So uh, uh, we've got a question here that, um, why did you choose the University of Auckland over maybe some of the others that might offer a similar uh, subject? And uh, once you were here, how easy did you find it uh, to adapt to the living in Auckland, being from uh, somewhere else? Um, so, one of the things that attracted me to Auckland was actually that they had biomedical engineering. And the fact that that was something that I was interested in because it, it was very cool developing technology and it was on the forefront of technology, which was interesting to me. Um, so the fact that there was biomedical engineering, it meant I could keep my choices open and none of the other universities around New Zealand offered that degree. So that was probably what drew me here the most. But also um, for getting used to life in Auckland, it was very easy. I, it was so much fun. Nelson is quite small compared to Auckland. It's not that small though. Contrary, contrary to popular belief, but um, nah, so you just get very used to the city. You can find your way around pretty easily. Like it's pretty logical. And if you go into halls, you'll meet lots of people and many of the people in halls are from Auckland. So that gives you lots of connections to help you find your way around. I just follow people around for the first couple of weeks and you quickly find your feet. Awesome, thank you. And now this question is for both of the students, Brittany and Alex. How did you deal with the transition from high school to engineering? And what was the most important thing that you wish you knew back then that you know now? I can start. Yeah, um, sure. Okay, so one of the things that I found fascinating is people go from high school to university and they just stop doing extra, extracurriculars. They think, I'm gonna be too busy now, I just can't do that. And that was me in first year. I was like, I'm just going to focus on my studies. I'm going to get into my specialization and that's what I'm going to do. Someone said to me, like, I think it was actually a meme on Facebook. And they were just like, why is it we, we can do all this stuff all through high school and then at university, like you wake up in the morning and then you're tired and you just don't want to do anything. <laughs> and that honestly called me out so hard. And so I just started getting really involved. And I think the biggest transition from high school to university is keeping it like high school and you'll enjoy the experience a lot more. Like that may be weird to say, but yeah, I think if you get involved and you keep involved, you get way better at managing your time and your degree seems way less overwhelming. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I think the best part about it is having more time to do what you want to do as well. You're not constrained to be uh, at school for six hours a day. Uh, you can come for your classes and you can go and study when you want and do all these cool things. Um, so I think the transition is a lot easier than most people think. It definitely gives you a lot more freedom um, and, and meeting all the people is, is a real big bonus and it really helps with that transition and it, it makes it a lot better than you think it would be. I remember when I was in like year 13, yeah, and I was really dreading coming to university. I was like, no, I've got my friends sorted. I've got my course is sorted. I just want to skip the next four years. And I just want to get a job already. Um, but I cannot believe I wish that because it has been the most fun ever. Um, and yeah, it really helps change you for the better. Um, and, and you make so much more friends. And yeah. Great. Thank you both. Uh, now there's a question in the Q and A that has been answered already, but um, we'd like to uh, hear Alex and Brittany's um, kind of of that. And it was a question around the options for the general education paper in your first year. If you need a bit more information about the other subject options for your first year, um, then have a look at the recording of one of our other Engineering Futures Evening events where we give a bit more of a breakdown of the options in the first year. Uh, in terms of limiting the options for your general education paper, the main requirement is that it can't be too closely aligned with the technical subjects that you'll be taking within your degree. So there's really a lot of room to move and it's certainly not limited by what you uh, took at high school. It's meant to be a broadening experience. So. Uh, I'd now like to hand over to Alex and Brittany to talk about how was your experience of the general education paper? What did you study and why? And um, was there maybe a, a friend who took a particular course in their first year for that general education paper that you were really envious of? And what was that course? 
Um, I ended up taking philosophy in my first year. Um, it was super interesting to me. I, yeah, I just thought it'd be a laugh. Uh, it'd be a lot of fun and it'd be really interesting and very different from engineering. Um, it was very fun, don't get me wrong. I was very envious though of my friend. He took um, Antarctica studies, which was just super random. Like I didn't even know they did a course on that, um, but he learned so much about like all the animals there in the ice and, and all that stuff. Um, as well as I, I think I wish, yeah, one of my friends also took dance, um, general dance. And I think that'd have been a lot of fun as well. So I think I, I chose a good one, but I would have liked to choose an even broader one that would just be a lot of fun and really add to me as a person, I think. Yeah, so you can take pretty much any paper you want as your general education paper. Um, so many people from engineering take that Antarctica studies paper and I know a lot of people enjoyed it. But honestly, half the students who were engineers on my floor at halls took that Antarctica paper <laughs> and they all had fun. But I was so happy to choose my Italian paper. That was honestly, that was primo. I wouldn't have wished for any other one. I had lots of fun learning Italian because we started from real basic and you learned so much really quickly. It's so much more efficient than learning languages at high school. And yeah, you, some days the lecturer was really cool. And so some days I remember she just had a whole two hours where she just showed us random videos from Italy of the different festivals they had. They just, she told us all about the coffee etiquette that we had to follow if we were in Italy. And it was so much fun. It was so contrasting to engineering. And I think, it's really good to step out of your comfort zone and do something really contrasting to everything else you do. It makes your semester so much brighter. Thanks so much, Brittany and Alex. I actually took an art class when I was in my engineering undergrad many years ago. Um, the next question is about programming language. So what was the programming language that you learned in your first um, course that you learned programming at the University of Auckland? Um, and just maybe did you have any experience with programming before you started at the University of Auckland? And just before I hand it over to the students, know that our program does not require any programming experience. So our first course does assume that you have no knowledge of programming. So I'll hand it over to the students to share their experience. Yeah, I literally had not done any programming before. Um, it was like this weird kind of magic thing to me. Uh, my high school didn't offer it. Um, otherwise, I may have got into it. But university was easily like one of the best ways to get into it, I think. Um, I ended up learning MATLAB, which is a good uh, language for simple coding and modeling, um, as well as C, which is a very common uh, language. And it's kind of the basis for a lot of other programming languages. Um, and as a first time programmer, it was super easy and it was a lot of fun and you do really cool projects. Um, nothing like, you know, stuck at home for eight hours a day, seven days a week, trying to code something. Um, it's, it's very fun and very different. And I think university delivers it in a good way. Yeah, so the MATLAB and C is the compulsory paper for first year. And you'll take that in the second semester. And it's actually a really good introduction to coding because MATLAB is such a fun wee language because there's not much syntax and there's lots of resources to help you. Mm. So it means it's really it's a really good introduction to coding and then you move into a language which has a bit more syntax and you actually have some rules to follow and i think that's a really good transition throughout the first semester uh, throughout the second semester and yeah you'll pick up coding really quickly but for me i had had some coding experience before i came to uni and that was in my electronics course at high school i'd done arduino now the arduino i'd done wasn't super complex but i had done some cool projects so i'd done a line following robot, a robotic arm and a evolutionary slot car set. But yeah, so whether you have no experience or some experience, you can pick up coding pretty easily. And yeah, it doesn't really matter what code you've had experience in either. It, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, now the next question is also for uh, Brittany and Alex. And uh, this time it, we, we saw those maps before. We saw that the university is close to a lot of things. Uh, I'd like to hear a bit about your experience of uh, what, when you weren't studying on campus, what was your favorite uh, place to go or, or thing to do in the vicinity of the city campus? And why was that? I've got a bad habit. Um, I really love Duck Island ice cream. I don't know if you're from Auckland or the Waikato, you will know about it. It's so good. And yeah, I've spent way too much money there. I've, I've gone there way too often. And literally we would have, I had my car at the hall and so did one of my friends. And we would take out, like our, almost our whole floor <laughs> to Duck 
Thailand. We would do carloads of 10 over there just so we could all experience that. And yeah, it's, it's a good time waster. We were, they have a store in Ponsonby and Newmarket. So both very close. You could hop on a scooter and go there. <laughs> yeah, that was my favorite thing to do. Yeah, easily on that theme, getting food, I think is the like one of the best things. Um, in high school, it's like you go to the dairy to get a pint of beer with your mates. But like when you're at uni, it's more like actually going out for dinner and seeing all these cool places. Because there's a lot of cheap places uh, around yeah. the city where you can eat as well. So I think that's probably one of the funnest things. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of really cool little food joints mm. that you can go and support. And yeah, yeah. some are a little bit different. Okay, we have time for just one more question. So just a very quick one. Um, do you have any advice for the students that are watching? Any kind of, you know, as they're deciding whether they should study engineering, come to the University of Auckland, what would be your one nugget of advice that you'd like to pass along? Um, have fun from the start is definitely my advice. Um, I waited until second year to do clubs um, and I really shouldn't have because it's been like the best part of my degree. Um, starting from first year would have been excellent. Um, but I, I guess overall, it's like, if you're not having fun in your first year, um, something's wrong and you need to fix it. Um, you really need to enjoy what you're doing, whether that be maybe changing your degree, if that's really what's right for you, or maybe it's like you're spending too much time studying um, because you're not supposed to spend your whole life studying. Um, get involved in other things and make sure you find what you like doing. Um, don't be afraid to take engineering. It's really not as hard as everyone makes it out to be. I know every other degree at university is equally as hard, but yeah. So don't be afraid to do it. And if it's not right, you can always change. But if you have this little bit in you that you might want to do it, just do it. So yeah, you will regret it otherwise. I know so many people who have gone, I'm going to take the sensible route and do something else. But yeah, just, just do, just do engineering. <laughs> A fantastic answer, of course. Uh, and that brings us to the end of our allotted time for this evening's event. So uh, I'd really like to thank all of you for dialing in, for joining us, um, for joining especially Alex and Brittany, who really were the stars of the show tonight. Uh, so thank you all very much for joining us. Yeah, and just as a reminder, we will be sending out, for everyone that is a registered attendee for tonight, we'll be sending out all of the Zoom links from the recordings for these engineering future sessions um, quite shortly. And also, um, don't forget to apply. So applications are open and we're really looking forward to receiving yours. So just like Brittany said, go for it. Jo join us at engineering. <laughs>